guys welcome to metlens so in this video we are going to discuss about the development of the kidney we are not going to uh, go in detail of the development we'll just discuss what about the basics of the development of the kidney so basically if this is the embryo um, umbilical cord of the developing fetus this is i'm thinking the caudal limb of the fetus from the umbilicus we have the allantois right this is the allantois and just behind the allantois we have the hind gut this is the hind gut and behind the hind gut we have the arising from the allantois we have the mesonephric duct this is the mesonephric duct so from the mesonephric duct a bud arises that is called as a ureteric bud so this is the ureteric bud and around the ureteric bud we have the metanephros metanephros or it is also called as the metanephric cap so quickly revising this is the allantois and from the allantois arises the mesonephric duct from the mesonephric duct we have a small bud called as the ureteric bud and at the uh, cranial end of the ureteric bud we have the metanephros or the metanephric cap so basically this is the allantois and this is the hind gut from the hind gut arises the mesonephric duct mesonephric duct and from the mesonephric duct we have a bud called as the ureteric bud and at around the ureteric bud we have a cap that is called as the metanephric cap metanephric cap or it is also called as the metanephros metanephros so the kidney consists of two components we have the excretory and the collecting component so basically it consists of the two components we have the excretory component and then we have the collecting component so the metanephric cap this will form the excretory component and this ureteric bud will form the collecting component so the excretory component consists of the nephrons which will develop from the metanephros or the metanephric cap but whereas the collecting system the consists of the collecting tubules the collecting ducts the minor and the major calluses the renal pelvis and also the ureter and they all arise from the ureteric bud so initially the kidney develops in the pelvis right so the kidney develops in the pelvis and it is supplied by the internal iliac artery it is supplied by the internal iliac artery and subsequently it will ascend up to its adult position gaining successfully new arteries and they, those new arteries will come from the abdominal aorta so as it as the kidney ascends upwards it will gain new arteries from the abdominal aorta and as the new arteries are formed the older arteries will degenerate successively so this is about the uh, basic development of the kidney we will also discuss about clinical significance of the kidneys uh, stick to the video till the end and also if you are new here please make sure to subscribe so discussing about the clinicals of the kidney so in the clinicals of the kidney we have some common congenital anomalies we will discuss them in detail firstly about the lobulated kidney so what do you know of the lobulated kidney so it's nothing but as the persistence of the fetal lobulation in the adult kidney so the fetal lobulation is present just not much important we will just know that fetal lobulation is present in the adult kidney that is known as the lobulated kidney and then we have the something called as the aberrant artery so in the persistence of one of the fetal arteries is common in around 30 percent of the individuals so especially it may be an artery from the iota to the lower pole of the kidney so persistent artery persistent artery of the fetus is present in the adult life and it occurs in about 30 percent of the individuals so that's about the aberrant artery the next thing is they have the congenital polycystic kidney so the polycystic kidney is very important so basically it is formed if the luminity con luminal continuity between the nephros and the collecting tubes fails to establish so basically what happens we have the this is the ureteric bud right this is the ureteric bud and around the ureteric bud we form the metanephros or the metanephric cap so this metanephric cap will form the excretory system and this ureteric bud will form the collecting system so basically these should join if these did not join what will happen the glomeruli will continue to excrete urine but this urine is not going to the collecting system so basically the excreted urine will start accumulating in the tubules and due to lack of outlet these will grow into the cysts 
they will form cysts and that that continuous cysts forming into the kidney that will result into the polycystic kidney so as a result the tubules will undergo cystic enlargements and that will result into the polycystic kidney so that's about the polycystic kidney the fourth thing we have is the horseshoe kidney So what about the horseshoe kidney? The occurrence of the horseshoe kidney is 1 in around 800 people. So it occurs due to fusion of the lower poles of both the kidneys. We have the two kidneys, right? So these two kidneys will fusion at the lower pole like this. They will fusion at the lower pole. So this will result into the horseshoe kidney. So basically the ureters will pass anterior to the isthmus and the inferior mesenteric artery also passes anterior to the isthmus which will limit the ascent of the horseshoe kidney so the ureters will come down like this and it will limit its ascending upwards so this is about the horseshoe kidney and then the fifth thing we are discussing is the renal agenesis renal agenesis so basically renal agenesis it occurs when the ureteric bud fails to develop the ureteric bud should develop at if it fails to develop failure of ureteric bud so the failure of ureteric bud will develop into renal agencies. It can be unilateral renal agencies or bilateral. So physicians should never assume that the patient has two kidneys. So the surgeon before doing nephrectomy should also consider if the patient has two kidneys because the patient may be suffering from renal, renal agencies also. So the next thing we have is the renal, on, renal or the renal and ureteric calculi. So what about the renal and the ureteric calculi? So they are also called as the urinary tract stones. So they occur more frequently in men than in the women. So they are usually associated with the sedentary lifestyles. And the stones are formed by the aggregation of calcium, then the phosphate and also we have the oxalate. Stones are formed by the calcium, phosphate and oxalate and also urate and the soluble salts within an organic matrix. So when urine becomes saturated with these salts, then the small variation in pH will also cause these salts to precipitate and form stones. So where are the stones located? They may be located in the renal calyces. They may be located in the ureter or also the urinary bladder. So that's about the ureteric, uh, renal or the ureteric calculi. So this is about the basic clinicals of the kidney. So thank you guys. Thank you for watching the video till the end. Please make sure to subscribe and hit the like button. Thank you so much.